Qualitative Research Methods, Module 4. For Module 4, the intended learning outcomes are identify research methods within a specific methodology, differentiate between methods, choose a method appropriate to a research project, or appropriate to a specific methodology. All right. If you're going to to um, to use qualitative research, given whatever kind of methodology you are in, there are only two fundamental methods that you will be using. That is the interview and observation. Just for this session, we're going to discuss about the interview. And for the, for the next session, we're going to talk about observation. All right. Definitely, you have done some interviews already. But doing qualitative research is a different story. So it needs lots of planning lots of conceptualization um, you need to be backed up also with your again your uh, psychological perspective so on and so forth so again um, you're going to focus just for this session on the process of interview all right um interview is a human inter interaction it's part of human life is is of being able to inquire about people is part of our life okay and even in in a, in a day-to-day -day, uh, um, dealing with uh, people we ask we inquire about what's happening with their lives so interview is not an um, it is not a an activity beyond our experiences it is part and parcel of our day-to-day -day activity the second is, is a conversation and how participants see and interpret the world. So by interviewing, we see how they see life, their worldview, their perspectives, um, their beliefs, so on and so forth. It is also a dialogue. It is an exchange of ideas, right? It is this exchange of views. It is not only about dialogue, it is also an exchange of views. So by interviewing, we also it's also about meeting people with common interests. So what are the common interests? Pintekasi is a common interest. Dealing with the challenges is a common interest. People, um, people who are abused gathering together together to talk about um, the experience of being abused is a common interests, right? Um, children who who, um, who, were, who who experienced some challenges during the COVID-19 online learning, or rather online, online learning during the COVID-19 is a common interest. And another thing that we have to, to take in about interview, it is not an exclusive objective nor subjective process of data gathering. So it is not only about, um, it's an objective way of, of taking the views of people, it's not also about subjective. Very often, the, um, um, when we do interview, definitely we'll be able to encounter some objective and subjective processes, okay? Objective and, or, and subjective views. Next, why interview? We interview in, in order to understand, evaluate, or assess a person, situation, or events. We interview to affect therapeutic change. So then we may interview therapeutic change. There are times that even we, by doing the interview, it, it influences the views of people. And even during the interview, it somehow it, it creates some changes. It impacts the way people see themselves. It triggers memories, it triggers emotions, it triggers some behavior.
That is why it is therapeutic. Um, by interview, we, we test or develop hypotheses. We, uh, we create some probing on what we believe in okay, by doing interview. By interview, we also develop some kind of research instrument. Towards the end of, of, of this course, I will be sharing with you how I develop an instrument by doing an interview. And of course, we interview to gather data. Okay, And last but not the least, we interview to sample opinions. We would like to um, echo some kind of uh, perspective or worldview of a specific individual or a specific group. Next, what are the advantages of doing an interview? Um, doing an interview is a flexible method in gathering data. What do you mean by, um, by flexibility? You can do um, a variety of activity in, um, in gathering data. And later on, we will realize that there are so many ways by which we can do um, interviews. And the next one is it enables multi-sensory channels to be used. So what do we mean by multi-sensory? Um, it is not only about um, um, when you're doing interview, it, it, you are not only about, you, do, you don't only listen, you observe, you, 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 you flex different, different um, sensations, different senses. In um, in uh, in gathering data, in for example, you're trying to observe how how people speak. Um, you you figure out the words being used. You look into a specific culture attached to the words they used. Okay. Um, next is the ex you explore issues in depth. You, you dig deeper, by doing interview, you're able to dig deeper into a specific concept. So, in, for example, in comparison with, um, with do, by simply doing a survey, you just distribute a questionnaire, but um, um, the, uh, the thing is that you're not able to go deeper into um, some stories behind those constructs or behind those concepts you have uh, um, you have set in during um, I want to call this you have set in during the survey and the next one is to observe their thoughts processes by doing an interview you, you just don't listen to words but you're able to see how they uh, how they think how they organize their ideas how they remember things, how they reflect upon their their concerns and lives or issues uh, surrounding them. And the next one is to observe behaviors as they express their thoughts. So you're not only listening to words, but you're also um, listening to the behaviors expressed, um, I mean, uh, manifested uh, with, the, with the words that they expressed. Because there's some other times also that um, uh, this is just an example that, for example, you talk about happiness. A person is talking about happiness, but as you see the behavior, the, the behavior of a person does not re re reflect the happiness um, being expressed. And the last one is to interview, um, um, explain further um, survey, self survey results. So I mentioned earlier that, so by by doing an interview, it expands your your understanding coming from a certain survey. As for example, you survey about resilience or or confidence, but maybe evil, being able to interview, you you strengthen your understanding of a certain concept in the survey by going through the narratives or the stories of people, the challenges behind um, a certain situation that made them resilient, for example. Uh, what are some of disadvantage, disadvantages of using interview? It is time consuming. 
it entails lots of time, not only for planning, but in executing it. And more so after executing it, when you already have the data, then you still have to do lots of analysis of, of the data, okay? And open to interviewer bias. So what do we mean by that? So it is possible that unconsciously you are bringing, bringing in your own prerogatives, you're bringing your own, uh, let's say, stereotypes, your own, your own biases towards, um, you're leaning towards a certain belief. Just for example, just for example, you are, you are a social activist and you're doing some interview. Sometimes you you try, I mean, it, it can be conscious, it can be unconscious that you try to, even in the formulation of the question, it becomes so leading towards towards what you believe in. Okay, so you already have your preconceived answers. Um, I mean, anticipating already. I mean, anticipating um, your your presumed answer uh, towards the question. Um, on the other hand, also, so you, you can you, you may encounter an interviewee fatigue. Uh, what do we mean by this? This is the 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 interviewee does not get tired of of being interviewed, but also. Um, get tired in the whole in the whole in, in the in the process in the process of the of the interview so it's um so it, it, they lose the some they, they when you get into interview for the you lose the meaning of 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 the activity they lose meaning of of what of, of what they're doing in, into of what they're doing uh it does not make sense to them Okay, and the last one is the anonymity may be difficult. Yes, definitely because when, um, let's for example with the uh, with the survey uh, method, so people um, um, have an assurance that, that nothing will be divulged about, not nothing will be concealed. Um, uh, what do you call this about? their personal um, information. Uh, unlike with the um, unlike with the uh, with the qualitative, especially with the interview, so um, there might be it's like is directly or indirectly you might be able to um, to bring out some personal information about the interviewee. That's why you really have to be very, very careful about planning uh, the interview. And, and writing our, our qualitative research that 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 um, as much as possible we don't reveal in there even indirectly some information about the, the participants of our research and the next one is what are the competency of interviewer if you're going to do some interviews, so take note of these um, very basic competencies. What are the qualities that you need to have? First is the sensitivity to culture, okay? Um, any kind of culture, and that includes includes um, the beliefs, the gender, okay. What else? And that. And that may also include, I mean, understanding the demography of people. Just for example, with this one, I had an interview with the indigenous people. Okay, so let's say they are also very sensitive in, I mean, uh, in terms of in terms of the use of language, in the way. Uh, just for example, hindi ka naman pag interview ko sa mga indigenous people, hindi ka gagamit ng mga ligwahe na hindi nila naiintindihan. Just for example, makikita niya dito na unity. Okay? Uh, nagagamit na nalang ling Odo English yan. Nagagawit, nagagamit na nalang lingwahe yan. Ito, for example, livelihood. Nagagamit na nalang lingwahe yan. Ito mga nakasulat dyan, galing sa kanila yan. So when I was doing uh, in, uh, the interview while writing what they were talking about uh, on this paper, um, I was very um, aware that what I'm writing here is coming from coming from them. 
Okay? Na alam nila yon. So, hindi ako gagamit na isang ng, uh, ng lingwahe na beyond their understanding. Okay? Even the way you behave. is pag English-English ka doon, siyempre, may i-eliminate mo yung mga tao. So, you would have to speak their language. Okay? So, we have a common... When I was doing the interview, I'm using a common language known to us, and that is the Bisaya, or Cebu, they call it Bisaya, or, or the Cebuano. Okay? The next one is listening skills. Okay? And definitely, you have, you have already some kind of orientation about how to listen. How to listen to, not only to words, not, but being able to listen to behavior, being able to listen to emotion, being able to listen to, even to the um, non-verbal, um, um, non-verbal gestures of the people. Um, and, and listening, um, would entail lots of, I call this, sensitivity to many things, sensitivity to your own preferences, and sensitivity to the preferences of people. Observation skills. When you're an interviewer, you have to be very, very observant on what's happening around. Observant to the words, observant to the emotions, observant to the behavior. Okay? Everything. And communication skills. So you see, for example, um, what I what I use here to communicate with people, right? And organizing also. I mean, finding a way to 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 make the interview more organized. I did not also only use the word, but I also used um, what do you call this um, papers to write to write the responses. So they begin to remember what, well, how they responded to the questions, and at the end, be able to organize to see collectively um, the needs of the needs of the community because this is a Manobo community, this is indigenous community, so that we'll be able to to collect collectively see their their own struggles, their struggles in the community. Psychological grounding. Um, we have talked about this before. Um, you should be aware of your philosophical framework, okay? You should be aware of your, of, of your, of the psychological perspectives that, that guides you on how you think, on how you say things, okay? Um, you needed to have some, some substantial experience in dealing with people. Because that's very basic, you will be dealing with different with the diversity of people, gender, culture, socioeconomic status, what else, adult, children. So you need we need to have a very basic on on how to deal with people, okay, on how to manage diversity. And the next one is the group processes skills. Because doing the interview, is really, when you start to look at the, we're going to look at the methodology or later on, we will not only be interviewing individuals, but we will be dealing with group of people in the interview. So we need some basics of, of group processing skills because it's different when you're listening. For example, it's different when you're listening to an individual and listening to, um, to a group. Okay, it is it is quite challenging, and it necessitates basic skills in group management. And uh, the next one is planning and organizational skills, because interview is not just simply okay. I write my questions and uh, immediately I go to people. You have to organize your interview from beginning to end. How are you going to start and how are you going to end? How are you how how are you going to deal with the different? For example. My, uh, my participants are children, so how, how am I going to, to organize the, uh, the interview from beginning to end? So my, my uh, participants are uh, abused women, sexually abused, physical abused, and they're very vulnerable. They're very fragile. So how am I going to, how am I going to, to organize my interview? 
how am I what kind of words am I going to use for example in dealing with abuse sexually abused women okay uh, the next one is um, no I just I just remember when I was dealing with OFWs before especially for the abuse women abuse um, overseas Filipino workers women um, when I was doing the interview because um, they are they were abused and they they are very sensitive to men so um, I even I have to ask permission okay uh, to interview them but at the same time I, uh, I, I asked somebody one of the administrator of that place to accompany me okay so that they will feel safe uh, they will feel safe um, when a man um, interviewing them okay so this kind of sensitivity that you will have to 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 consider and that is part of planning and the next one is recording data um, you will have to plan I mean doing an interview at the same time recording data is another challenging thing so you will have to plan it out and there's just so many ways of recording data okay and I will talk about that later on how to interview so I'm just going to give you um, a, a very general list of how to interview and later on in the the last part as you as we look into the different methodology that we discussed the last time so uh, we have to specifically plan things according to a specific methodology so um, this time I'm just going to give you a very the most basic but later on side by side with the methodology there is a specific way of doing an interview which you have to figure out okay so the first one is to plan and construct your interview so I just don't go there and and uh, bring your question in interview so you have to size up everything the person that you're going to interview the kind of question that you're going to use the kind of word that you're going to use how you even how how even you do how even you dressed up just for example you are interviewing indigenous people and you will be going there there with high heels with all full makeup so on and so forth so you have to i mean to to adjust with the situation of the people okay what else um the next one is to seek consent from interviewers so this is very important and in every culture in every gender or every preferences or or um, given the age um, given the specific space you needed to ask for permission okay you have we have to ask for the consent of the interviewers on what we're going to do whether it's an interview we're going to record the interview so on and so forth um, interviewees are sufficiently informed about reasons, goals, and benefits of the interviews. Okay, so we have to inform them about what will going to happen and set the time for interview. But again, you have we have to make an adjustment for these at all times because the way we view time might be different on how the people view their time. Okay, remember. We are the ones asking for favor, not them. So as much as we are bounded by time, we also have to respect how they understand their time. Develop questions that generate straightforward questions. So, so when we're developing questions, make sure that it will generate straightforward questions. So you have to, to, um, to, to make your questions easy to understand right mm, plan the sequencing of questions so so for example you have let's say in an interview you have five questions so you should should be able to 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 sequence the questions um accordingly okay according to its perhaps importance um the questions should be supporting each other Okay, so that you will be see the the progression 
of the progression of the data. Okay, so again, that necessitates planning. Um, and um, plan how you will start and how you will end the interview. So what kind of, of how, I mean, how are you going to approach this? So for example, you're going to a community, so how are you going to start? And eventually, how are you going to end? Not only, I mean, about going to the community. For example, even if you're, you're interviewing an individual, so how are you going to, to establish your, I mean, the, the meeting point between you and, the, uh, and your participants? And the next one is to pilot interview to ensure the achievement of target target goal. Sometimes we, we, we need this. If we, we just we simply want to to be sure of what we're we're going to do. So you can do some pilot interview. For perhaps you can interview some um, two people two people, and by then you'll be able to see the reaction of your participants and the kind of data you'll be able to um, to uncover. Then, by having the, the pilot interview, you'll be able to correct what you need to correct. You'll be able to modify what you need to modify. And the next one is use simple words. Simple words, avoid jargons. For example, when you talk about resilience, people, many people do not really understand uh, resilience, even from myself. This is, a, this is a high polluting word that is like a huge, I don't know if it's a huge concept. For example, resilience. I, I don't know where it's really coming from. So when you when you put this when you when you use this kind of jargons, it may it might I know difficult words. The words in itself might alienate people. I mean, it's they, they might lose interest with the kind of words that you use. But when you start diving into the culture, for example, the culture of people and using their own language, then it will things will be easier for for them to understand. Just for example, if you're using and you're interviewing an indigenous people, so you might as well know some um, easy words that, um, uh, for example, the uh, the Manobo words, and then that then you will be able to to create a, a deep connection with them. Okay, use language easy to understand. Use a language easy to understand. Okay. Mm. Take note of observations. So what are you going to observe? Feelings, behavior, environment, and even some interactions happening and the personality of your participants. Be sensitive with the words you use. So be aware of the culture, beliefs, gender, um, socioeconomic conditions, values, issues, stereotyping. Okay. And and to avoid some um, um, some mistakes on this, I really have to plan. Okay. Avoid leading words. There, I mean, sometimes we we don't observe about it, but it, sometimes it happens. That the kind of question we ask is leading to the the kind of answer we expect. Okay, so it's a kind of, we we manipulate the questions so that the answers will be getting towards. Um, our our personal plans or our personal agenda, and it is not, you know, in terms of research, it is. I mean, in terms of reflecting the the views of people, it will not work. Okay, ask clarifying follow up questions like, "What do you mean?" Okay, can you please explain further? Okay, so you um, translate that in their perhaps in their own language. I say there there might be time that that we might not be able to to really get the what, what they were talking about so you can follow follow up okay can you explain more okay. um, explain the rational and goals I've talked about that earlier already establish rapport motivate people to be part of activity generate mutual trust and respect between participants um, just for example, when I was when I was dealing with the community, it's very important you connect with leaders. The moment you connect with the leaders, then you'll be able to establish rapport. Okay, establish a, a connection with the people. Okay. 
ensure that the interview is conducted in appropriate, non-stressful, and non-threatening manner. So, uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, we are the ones asking a favor. Tayo yun ang istorbo sa kanila. So, we make sure that hindi nakakapagod yung interview, hindi siya nananakot. Minsan kasi nakakatakot yung, yung proseso ng na ginagamit nakakatakot yung proseso na ginagamit natin na nai-stress ang mga tao. Okay. Lalo na kung papasok sa isang komunidad na na bago, uh, alien alien ka sa kanila at kung hindi ka hindi tayo magiging sensitibo doon sa nangyayari sa loob, for example, ng community. So, aside sa nagiging threat tayo, hindi natin makukuha yung gusto nating makuha sa kanila na that is about data, information about information about them. Explain well the process and rules to avoid any conflict. Okay? Um, napakahalaga na, na ma-establish agad na ito yung mga protocols, ito yung dapat na mangyari. At ito yung uh, ex- expected sa kanila na participation para ma-avoid yung conflict. Kasi um, kung hindi klaro yung protocols, baka mamaya mag-cause pa ng awa yung interview na ginagawa mo. As for example, part of the role is to be able to listen, respect, um, respect the op- the um, the opinions or the views of others. That is why when you are constructing or ju- uh, uh, planning your interview, you just make sure na itong mga bagay na ito ay may iwasan. Kasi baka kasi yung question mo mag-lead sa tawag dito, sa pag-aawaya ng mga... Yes, for example, when you're doing group group interview, mag, mag, mag-result ito ng awa. Even you're doing an individual interview, the the kind of question that you you might raise might be so sensitive that it will um, trigger some emotional response, negative emotional response. So we have we have to give space for spontaneity as much as you want to to be to be structured and get get the the um the data that we want to get we need to be very very spontaneous also because in, in spontaneity kapag nagiging spontaneous yung mga tao yung nat, yung yung naturalness sa kanila yung lumalabas yung kung ano yung nararamdaman yung talaga ni ilalabas nila so parang wala sila itatago sa iyo okay and the next one is safe appropriate and comfortable space as for example, mag-interview ka ng individual, uh, siguraduhin mo na na tahimik yung lugar, um, very relaxing ang lugar, at walang masyadong disturbances na mangyayari. So, kagaya ng example na may ko kanina, kung for example, mag-interview ako ng babae, so given the um, um, the sensitivity, okay, so importante na na walang, I mean, safety para, for example, ikaw ang lalaki nag interview na hindi ka na, na hindi ka maakosahan na nangaharas ka pwede ka kasi na parang uh, tupakin yung parang magkaroon, para, parang nawala sa sarili yung interview mo tapos in ka ng, ng sexual har- harassment, pwede kasi mangyari yun eh so, kinakailangan mong i-safeguard yung in-interview mo sa sarili mo rin kinakailangan mo rin safeguard ang sarili mo to avoid those kind of yung example na ibinigay ko na maakos, maakosahan ka na may ginagawa kang iba okay so no interruptions and disturbances at least on your part na wala kang hindi ka hindi ka sasagot ng mga telepono mo kapag may tumatawag sa, sa, sa interviewers kasi hindi kasi natin may iwasan na mayroon talaga mga interruptions na nagagaling sa kanila so we have to be very very flexible on that. Especially for example, when you are in a community, marami nang yari during during the interview. May mga pangailangan na magsurface. So we we have to be very very flexible and adjust. And uh, I think I have mentioned about this. So record your interview. Kasi minsan baka masado ka na na excited sa datos na kukuha mo, eh malibutan mo mag-record ng interview. As for example, kung isa kayong team na nag-i-interview sa, for example, sa isang group, 
Pwede ka naman mag-assign ng isang tao na um, na in charge sa pag-record ng interview. Paano mag-record ng interview? Pading isusulat o audio recording o video recording. Okay. Next, control responses. Meron kasi na as much as possible, we don't go beyond, um, let's say, two minutes of responses. Kasi parang kung ang sagot ng, sa bawat tanong parang telenovela na. So, ma mawawala na interest yung mga tao. Just a very, make sure the answer is very quick, very straightforward. Wala na siya itong morlolo. And unless, kinakailangan ng 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 elaboration yung yung tanong. Kasi kaya ngayon, depende yan sa sa plano na gagawin mo. But again, if um kung masyado nang mahaba yung sagot, so you should, should be able to control the responses and find a way you have to plan it out the, the most polite way to to stop a person to I mean to um to shorten the answer. Okay. This is not the time for people to argue. Okay. So, hindi, hindi ka nagpapa-interview para pag-awain yung mga tao, mag-argue sila sa isang sitwasyon o sa isang konsepto o sa isang karunasan. Um, so, ito yung mga kinakailangan nating makontrol at iwasan. Okay. Otherwise, hindi mo siguro gugustuhin na mag-uwi an yung mga tao na, na in-interview. Even when you're interviewing individual na... Pwede kasi yung mga question mo parang nakaka-trigger sa kanila. Na pwede, kang, pwede silang makipag-argue sa'yo. Okay? So you have, really have to plan that out. Uh, make, maintain a collegial, friendly, and respectful atmosphere. So create a more positive atmosphere para, para mas ganahan sila maglabas ng, ng information. Be aware of unconscious responses. Um, redirect the participants to your goal. Meron kasi na, for example, may mga tanong at kahaba mo nagkasalita sila, may na matitrigger ng mga karanasan, pwede silang mag-deviate mag doon sa, sa, sa tanong. So, as, as, as interviewer, either i-redirect mo sila doon sa, sa goal mo. Okay? Recognize the word of answers no matter how vague or inappropriate it is. Okay? Um... Next is, do not go beyond two-minute response. I mentioned that earlier. Avoid sensitive questions that you might not be able to handle. Okay, um, the exception is that kapag kinakailangan naman talaga, for example, uh, nag-agree naman yung mga, for example, sexually abused women na ma-interview, so meron talaga mga sensitive questions na, na, pwede, na, na pwede kang itanong. But in general, okay, kung... Um, kung hindi naman ito nangangailangan ng, ng going to a very, very personal question, so you don't have to ask those questions. Okay? Una-una sa lahat, lalo na sa inyong mga bago, wala pa kayong masyadong skills para humawak ng mga... Tapos, for example, merong uh, bigla na lang nag-hysterical dahil naalala niyo, may mga... Uh, um, what do you call this? Negative memory siya na alala, for example, on, on trauma, very traumatic event. Okay. So, paano mo i-handle yun? Kung wala ka pang mga skills, um, hawak na mga proseso para mag-manage na mga ganon. So, avoid asking sensitive questions at this time. Okay. So, give time for people to think. Okay, some people need time to process questions. May mga tao na hindi agad makakapagbigay ng mga ng, ng, ng immediate, for example, nagtanong ka, uh, ano yung, let's say, tanong about what are the challenges na nangyayari about online learning. So, may mga tao na mag-iisip muna yan. So, allow them enough time to think. I mean, a one-minute time, a one-minute could be, could be okay. Huwag naman masyadong 15 minutes, masyadong mauubos na yung oras mo sa pag-interview. And then, is pay attention to inconsistencies. Uh, just for example, um, um, may mga responses na 
nag nag nagkaka hindi nagkakatugmatug ba so you have to to clarify that also na for example you have mentioned about this and you also have mentioned about this um so you create some some way to clarify the to clarify the answers and they'll be able to make choices about those answers okay but don't do that in such a way na parang mapapahiya na yung tao. Okay? Do it in a very, very polite way. Na para hindi, hindi niya napapansin na, na, ang tawag dito, na, um, y- you're trying to, to look in the inconsistencies. Okay? So, so here, I'm giving you an example of, of how I got the interview. Um, aside from the video that I am taking here, I was taking here. Aside from the verbal interview with the with the children, I mean, um, these children are had an experience of war, the trauma of war, and I was trying to work on the on the spiritual aspects of children. So aside from the verbal interview, I asked them to draw, I asked them to write, okay. And you're, I'm dealing with children here, so the way I communicate with the children is a different way, different process communicating with um, communicating with adults. And when I was doing this, because children uh, experience war, um, the experience of security, or the experience of um, displacement, so they were accompanied by the parents, so the parents were just around when I was doing this activity. Okay, so that they will still feel safe and comfortable. And and when you are using the language, you make sure that it is very simple, easy, easy, easy for the children to understand. So you would see here you have different different ages of, of children here. So you have to be very, very flexible in communicating with them. So there are different kinds of interview. Okay. I think you are very much familiar with this. So the first one is the focus group interview. Sometimes we call this focus group discussion. So when you um, um, when you make use of this interview, it is an inter- interaction within a group. Individual interacting within a group. Individuals interacting with the interviewer. It is a collective view. Okay. If, for example, you interview people on the aspect of of um, surviving during the COVID nineteen challenges, so you 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 interview people who have common common interests towards those challenges during the COVID nineteen. So so you, so that you'll be able to gather a collective view. So researcher acts as moderator and facilitator. So we allow participants to view, view to emerge. We focus on specific theme. Okay, as for example, the um, the, the kind of example I gave a while ago is the the challenges, coping coping mechanisms during the COVID nineteen challenges. So that is a very specific theme. So we address your research question. Um, research question and goals. When you are doing focus group interview, we always focus with the with our research questions, okay, and the goal of research, and even the design of research. The composition and number of participants of, of focus group um, interview depend on the nature of the study. For example, so when you talk about um, family, so you, you can you, you may have family members, okay, so you would only have to stipulate what kind of family you, you you want so that you you be able to interview everybody, so you don't have, you don't um require to have, um, let's say, uh you have two year old uh child within that family, but you wanna be able to interview that. So, so the requirement will be, uh, for example, when you're going to interview family, so the requir- the requirement for particip- participants will be. 
um, members should be able to communicate, all right? Uh, in the interview, be able to answer the question during the interview, okay? So, um, uh, on the, another example is, for example, a group of mothers, group of adolescents, or a group of children, a group of OFWs, a group of nurses or doctors, okay? Five to ten persons, okay, is an ideal number of in FGI. Going beyond this is difficult to manage. But for example, you have 20 or 30, oh, come on. You will not be able to manage that. And it is not no longer, it is it's not effective anymore to, to be doing focus group with, with the large with large number. Five, ten is an, I mean, it's a manageable number. The time for FGI depends on the nature of the study and participants. Okay. Um, so again, this is still part of the planning. Okay, it all depends. Specifically with the participants, because for example, when I was doing the. Um, uh, my research on Pintakasi, I will still have to wait doing the group interview. I will have to wait for all the farmers to, uh, to arrive from work so they'll be able to rest and they're more, they are more relaxed. Minsan, inaabangan ko sila sa tinatambayan nila pagkatapos nila, for example, mangisda. Na, for example, sa nagiinuman sila, doon ako tumatiming. Dahil kapag nagiinuman sila, doon sila maraming nasasabi sa mga different aspects of their lives, okay? But that has to be noted sa, sa pag-usulat mo. All right, the next one is the non-directive interview. So when you use this non-directive interview, the researcher is dependent on the participant situation, attitudes, behavioral responses, and context. It is very much participant-centered. So, yung situation ng mga interviewer ang, ang nakikreate ng avenue sa planning mo. Okay. And it is, it is also called therapeutic interview. Um, because when, when you are doing interview, it can trigger a lot of things about the, um, the personal life of the interviewee na in the process, nagkakreate siya ng therapeutic effect sa kanila. Okay. Very often, this is um, very useful for case study. Especially, for example, your, your topic will be about uh, depression, depression or other uh, psychological issues, okay, or some, so, for example, behavioral issues then, this is this is this kind of interview will be very very useful. And the next one is focus interview. It's very much related to focus group interview, but this one is more example if you like to to deal with um, with individual uh, uh, interviewee, so you can make use of this also. Again, it focuses in gathering data. It is directed towards specific area in person's life. It focuses on subjective experience of a person. Person is directly involved on specific scenario. Uh, just, just for example, what do you mean by um, a person is directly involved in a specific scenario? For example, like interview ko about about abused women. So make sure na yung interview mo had experience being abused. Otherwise, um, hindi siya makakapag, um, uh, makakapag share ng, ng bagay um, authentically about being, for example, being abused, okay? Um, uses person's data to generate specific questions. So there are times na yung, yung datos mismo, yung, yung, yung lumalabas sa interview, pwede ka pang mag-generate na ibang question. Pwede ka pang, uh, yung, yung nasabi na can evoke another questions. That's why you call it evocative. You can come up with series of interviews. So, hindi lang yung, for example, I did an interview today. So, the following week, I can come up with another follow-up to, to, kasi there are times na may mga issues na lumalabas. Kapag nakita mo na yung interview, 
marirealize mo na, ay, kailangan ko pa i-follow up ito. So, pwede ka pang mag, 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 mag karaon ng series of interviews. Okay. But least at most, siguro mga two to three more uh, interview, but don't go beyond that. Kasi parang ma, ma, masasawa na yung tao sa kaya interview mo. At least two to three. Okay. Will be, um, will be doable. At the same time also, more, more, more acceptable pa, parang acceptable pa doon sa may interviewin mo. And problem-centered interview. So ito naman, madalas ito ginagamit kapag merong, merong tayong gustong mga problema na gustong i-address. Okay? May on a specific phenomenon. At gusto natin makita yung, for example, yung, yung coping ng mga tao sa isang problema. So ito yung pinaka-appropriate na interview process. So it gathers, it gathers um, evidence on human behavior and subjective views on social phenomena. It is flexible in using diverse interviewing process like individual, group, biographical interview, structured and non-structured. Okay. So bi- biographical interview is about looking into the life, um, real life story of a person. Okay. In-depth interview. Ito madalas natin ginagamit ito. Kapag gumagawa tayo ng na interview, minsan nababasa natin itong interview. We like to conduct an in-depth interview, for example, with um, with children who were who were abandoned, okay, who were um, let's say whose parents died during the COVID nineteen, okay. So it explores deep issues of life. It explores personal biographies. Uh, it encourages personal opinions, experiences, and emotions. It is a combination of structured and unstructured interview. Okay. So very often, so what kind of methodology? So, very appropriate it was um, case study. Um, the other one is narrative narrative inquiry methodology. Actually, pwede, pwede, pwede naman to sa halos, pwede naman to halos lahat ng methodology, itong in-depth interview. Okay. So now, when you start to look at methodology, so how will you plan your interview? What kind of interview are you going to use? So how, how, will you go, how, how are you going to plan? What will be your protocols? When you use grounded theory, when you use ethnographic study, phenomenological study, case study, narrative inquiry, and even action research, okay, or even a mix of methodology. So, what kind of interview? How how are you going? If you if you use interview um, as a method with this methodology, so how are you going to plan your interview? So here, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, this is, um, of course, this is a group group interview. This is also an in-depth interview. Um, what else? So basically, this is an in-depth interview, and um, it's a group it's a group interview. And we also work on a specific problem. This is also a problem uh, focus interview because I'm exploring how spirituality can be used to respond to the uh, um, to, to respond to the traumatic event um, that the children experienced. So this is also another um, kind of interview to understand the struggles of, of the community and and how uh, this is basically an action research and partly an ethnographic also all right 
So this is basically a focus group inter interview and also a problem-based interview. All right. So that ends my uh, uh, the first part of Module 4. And um, the next session, the next video, I will be discussing about observation. Okay. So for your assignment, answer the Module 4 form and um, continue to write your research project. So thank you so much for listening and be well.